Tonight is July the 6th, 2016. Here is the stereo version of the Acrosound uh, circuit. It's doing quite well. It still has some uh, strange issues and I made a comment in, in one of the um, replies to a, uh, a viewer that I think we needed to study uh, how other amplifier builders of this era dealt with some of the parasitics that uh, these amplifiers have. Now, I'm going to try to keep the camera as steady as I can on a tripod, but I'm going to have to move it around a little bit. I'm going to start showing you some, some schematics. Now, this is a little bit later era, the Dynaco Mark III, but I just want to point out some things, and then we'll come back and talk about why they're important. Look at this. This little 12 picofarad. And look at this 390 picofarad coming off the screen of one of the output tubes, one of the KT88s, back actually into the point, same point, as the negative feedback is. See, the negative feedback comes off the 16 ohm tap, goes through a voltage divider right here, 680 ohm, then a 1K, 1 watt, 750 picofarads into this little voltage divider right here. Anyway, I'm just pointing out some of the things. Here is a um, Fisher 70A of that very era. And look, look right here. They got an 82 picofarad and a 10K. They've also got a 500 picofarad coming off of this cathode winding. These are all capacitors and RC circuits and whatever in there to to uh, stop some of the parasitics. Macintosh uses a uh, I can't I can't read it out my glass. I think that's 100 picofarad right there off the plate of this tube. Then they use uh, RF chokes in the plate. Okay, so we're jumping around a little bit, I know, but look at this 82 picofarad and 18K. Look familiar? Looks just like that uh, Fisher that we just looked at. And then we got that 390 coming back, just like the other uh, Dynaco. This is the uh, ST70. Uh, Macintosh, let's see, here's some old heat kit stuff. This is a uh, W. 5M. I haven't looked this over. Look, they've got some uh, some interesting circuit here right in the very front end of it. Uh, I don't see much in here. Yeah, right there. 4.7K and a 270 picofarad. See, they're trying to calm these uh, stages down and keep them from bursting into little parasitic oscillations. And this actually uses the uh, Acrosound TO300 transformer. Now here's a little bit earlier model. Let's see. Let's go back to this one. Yeah, this used 12 AU7s. Two medium U triodes. Here's one. They use uh, 6S N7s, two medium U triodes over an earlier time. And they don't do much in here that I can see to mitigate uh, parasitics. Again, they used a TO300. Uh, Acrosound transformer. Now, when we look at the Acrosound transformer schematic that I've built here, it's exactly this schematic right here. Except I had to change the um, the feedback here, and I changed the input to this. We won't get into to it terribly deep, but I want to show you what the problems are. And it may be problems that the guys that built these things back in those days might not even have been able to see. First of all. Let's just um, let's just look at uh, the oscilloscope. I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in on this guy right here, so we can really get down. Let's see. Let's get the wires out of the way. Now I don't know how well you can see all this, but I bet you can see that. Okay. Let's do some auto scaling here. Yeah, see that right there. It's trying to burst into oscillation, and that is up in the 30, 40, 50 kilohertz range. Now, all I'm going to do right now is vary this little, these little input pots right here. 
This is the left channel. We'll zoom out here. Sorry for the fumbling. See, I've got two uh, input gain pots here. Left channel, right channel. Left, right. So I'm going to vary this right here. It's up all the way right now. But let's go back to the oscilloscope and, um, and look at this. These are not simple problems to solve. Now, as I turn it down, of course, we're turning down to volume two. Boop, goes away. Actually, pretty stable there. Now, our power dropped to 13 and a half watts. Right there, it's at uh, 23.8 watts at 1.7 percent THD. See, it, it just keeps doing weird things. Let me auto scale it again to get that thing back in perspective. We don't want that. That's just not right. Now, we can take a couple of different approaches. One is to use those like those 82 picofarads and the 10K to 15K to 18K, whatever, off the, uh, uh, the grid of the second stage. I haven't tried all of this yet, but those are things we need to solve. As I turn it down further, it goes away again. That's, well, that's all the way down, so there's nothing coming out. That's zero. And that's all the way up. See, all the way up, look, it's just barely there. Now that's at one kilohertz. As I vary the frequency, all this kind of stuff changes. No, I'm sorry, that's at 100 hertz. And that's where these things start going goofy. If we go to one kilohertz, we probably won't see any of it. Let's auto scale it again. See, it looks pretty stable there. Now I'm going to vary the pot. It's all the way up, and I'm going to vary it downward. And nothing happens. That, that, that jumping around is just the scope auto scaling. See, it looks good. We don't have a problem at one kilohertz. It's pretty darn good. 100 hertz, not so good. Now, we're not going to try to go down to 10 hertz or anything really weird like that. But we might want to go down to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, let's see, this would be 10 hertz. Let's go up to 50. Hard for me to do this. 46. There's 50 hertz. Yeah, see? There we got it again. Okay, auto scale. We don't want that. We got to deal with that, guys. And we want to deal with it in a way, not by just guessing at it and saying, well, what'll happen if we do this and what'll happen if we do that? We want to look at uh, how people have, of the past have solved these problems. And that, that's some of the ways they have solved it. Again, turning this thing down, setting it about half scale and just driving it a little harder, I believe, solves the problem. Well, no, my power is really low now. Okay, I'm driving it at plus 10, 10 dBm. Okay, see it burst into some really strange stuff there. That's at 25 watts, so. Right there, it goes away at 13 watts. 0.2%. 0.26%. Okay, look up here at these numbers. See, that's 0.263% at 13.57 watts. But this is the one that's really important to look at. Okay, let's zoom back so you can see all that I'm looking at. Now I'm going to uh, change the channels. I'm going to actually, uh, let's see there, you can see the, the whole setup. I'm going to go to the other channel and, let, and let's look at it. Okay, we're back now on the other channel. I'm going to tell you right off that this channel is a little stranger. <laughs> I'm running it at one kilohertz. I don't want to move the camera around a whole lot, so I hope you'll trust me here. Power is really low right now. 1.496 watts at 0.113% THD at 1,009 hertz. Okay, it's doing great. All right. Okay, let's crank it up. Now watch what happens. This channel is pretty squirrely. Once we get up to... Boom, look at all of that. That's at 18 watts, 0.7% THD. Woo! Look at 
that. That thing is just... Okay, there we go. Auto scale a little bit. But see, it, this thing's going bonkers on us even at kilohertz. I've already mitigated some of this. I, I just connected it right now, but that was... I put in one of those uh, capacitors off the uh, plate of one of the uh, output tubes. And it has to be a specific one, I have found out. The ground. But as I crank this one up, see? I mean, look at that. It just... Look at that. That's at 19.7 watts at 1.9%. It's just not good. And then it just... just it went, well, that's squared off. So we've done way over Okay, that's 25 watts. But it... The problem is... See, there's 25.42 watts. 1.6% THD. At... Uh, a kilohertz and then we're back to this guy and right there it's squared off but you know you're not running a sine wave through your amplifier while you're uh, trying to listen to music and, and there it is that's pretty darn good but you go down in volume just a little bit and you start getting that go down a little bit more and and you just get, there you go, you just get the strangest stuff. Now let's go down to 100 hertz. I think it gets really weird down here. Oh, it's pretty awful. Look at that. Can't believe that. That's just terrible. You could even look down here on the oscilloscope. Just at the oscilloscope and, 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 and see it. See that big fat bottom right there? Right there. So, these amplifiers may be like what our dreams were made of, or what they were made of, or whatever, but in their in the raw, they're just really not that good. They need to be tamed. That's why I called them the other day full of gremlins. So, I'm not gonna do it all tonight. I gotta do some square wave testing. I got to put a thermistor in the uh, primary of the uh, transformer as suggested by one good gentleman. Very important. Uh, it, it hasn't blown any fuses from uh, power up or anything. It's actually been quite good and it sounds marvelous. But uh, knowing that it does this, I will have to tell you this. I don't know if it's because I know this is a problem or if it's because I actually hear it. But I think I hear too much of a, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it seems like the highs oftentimes are, have too much of a, it, it, they have some sort of a, a little burst of, I don't know how to describe it, but they, the highs don't sound clean to me. The bass is marvelous just so very clean and crisp. These things do really quite well at low frequency. Let's go down to 50 hertz just, just to drive ourselves crazy. I'll show you here. 40, 40, 50. There's about 50 hertz. Yeah, look at that. Wow. And as we vary again the volume, well, let's see. I'll vary it over here at the amplifier. See, it's like, whoa, well, that's, that's squared off. Then we know we can't deal with that. See, that's that's horrible. That's 21 watts, 0.7% THD. See, it just all went away. Poof! Dropped to 10.7 watts at 0.3% uh, THD. Wow. And if we go down a little lower, it's actually doing okay. But there, no, that's not good. But we, we squared it off there. We're overdriving it. There, we're not overdriving it. 18 watts, 18 watts, 0.69% THD at 18 watts distortion. So those little bursts uh, have to be tamed. Let's see what we can do about it. Okay, here are a couple of tests that a, uh, a viewer suggested, and I, I think it's a good one. I think it's a good suggestion. Here's a one kilohertz square wave going into the uh, amplifier. 
Uh, 11 watts coming out. You can't pay attention to THD and everything, of course. Um, excuse me, I'll step in front of the camera and start this again. You can look over here at the uh, harmonic profile and see that it is indeed out of a square wave. It just has primarily the uh, odd harmonics. See, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. They're the dominant ones, the odd harmonics. But if we go back to the uh, oscilloscope screen and watch this thing a little bit, watch what happens when I raise it. Beep. See that right there? You might think at first that's power supply. Well, it's not. I think we're zoomed in enough you can see it because watch when I stretch it out. See there? Look at that. It's oscillating. It is not stable. This thing is just weird as a bucket of frogs. See the same thing down here on the uh, other oscilloscope. Right there, that's just a crazy one. So, <clears throat> I think the uh, basic design is good. I'm certainly not going to give up on it. I still think it's capable of 20 plus marvelous watts. I'm going to try some of these mini uh, solutions that I pointed out here from Dynaco to Fisher to Macintosh to whatever and uh, see how they do. And when I get through, I'll post a final video. This has got to be the next to the last video. I'll post on this beast. Let me turn it over. I'll show you underneath it. It's actually quite nice. Let's turn it off and unplug it. What I am using that is different from this, uh, the original design is I'm using all 6SN7s. This is the end, this is the first stage, the driver stage, final. First stage, first stage, second stage, and final. That's the way it actually ended up being built. Uh, the two 6SL7s that are supposed to go here are just make it so unstable that it's just um, it's just not worth working with, in my opinion. Underneath it, oh, it looks like this. Let's see if we can get this thing up. I'll have to pick the camera up and show you here. I've made it as uh, symmetrical as I can. I think most of you have, have seen, I think I may have shown some of this before, but I don't know if I showed both channels. There's left channel, right channel, power supply down here, there's those uh, black beauty input capacitors. Um, it's, about as, it's about as the same as I can get it. There's the uh, 350 ohm resistors that, uh, that did come in. Instead of that big monster thing I had out, and then there, there's the other channel. Uh, there's the feedback for one channel. Right there, a little RC circuit. And there it is for the other. So, um, see I have a capacitor right there that I have connected up, and it does help a lot. This capacitor right here is the equivalent to... Oh, darn, let's see which one is it. It's the equivalent to something like this one right here in the fissure. So I've got to experiment with this one and this one. And I believe when I put this one in, it pretty well stops the uh, the bursts. See, there's there, and, and they all come out here off the plate of the screen of one of the output stages. Now, I tried it on different ones, like here. Assuming this is this is representing well, no. Let's go to the real schematic. If I can find it amongst all this, yeah, right here. I did experiment with that capacitor, like plate and screen, plate and screen, and I believe it worked right here on this one. It has no effect on the other three. So it's actually quite a challenge to to uh, tame this thing. But I think once tamed. With a little bit of uh, parasitic mitigation here and here, I believe it's going to be nice and stable and and do a good uh, 20 watts 
well down to 20 hertz and uh, even a little below and, and do a marvelous job and up to I hope 15 kilohertz and stable and uh, I'll be satisfied thanks for watching